Well, I, I, I get a lot of emails from folks asking me what device they can buy to use at home because uh, you know, and a lot of these folks do not have a lot of money. So mm -hmm. I tell them to look for near infrared security floodlights. So these are 850 nanometers and they're sold so that various companies can have an invisible security light with an infrared camera so intruders can't see they're being filmed. And these are powerful. So you can get 70 or 100 watts of optical power. Wow. thousand dollars, a few hundred dollars sometimes. And if this was a laser, it would cost you a hundred thousand mm. dollars. But these LEDs that are produced in the Far East and made into these flood lamps, each single diode is three watts, right? Okay. So that is a chunky diode. It is. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. So it's a, it's a heck of a, a lot of them. And I'm wondering if we could go back and really address the Goldilocks dose, because you mentioned that there's a, there's a, there's a fairly significant band of therapeutic yeah. efficacy, but at some point it becomes actually uh, counterproductive and actually causes yeah. more harm than good. So what, what do you think the window is with respect to the number of watts of these LEDs that you'd be putting on your scalp? Right. I mean, again, this is a good question. Then, is it the total amount of energy you're putting in your body? Because these arrays, and for instance, the whole body light bed is a huge area. Right. The power density is modest. It's the same as anybody would use ten or twenty milliwatts per square centimeter. Oh, that is the power density on that bed. Okay. Yeah, but it's a big area. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, on, on the LED array, it's 10 or 20. So a lot of these devices have the same power density, but if they're because they're big and there's a lot of diodes, you put more energy into the body. Now, what we don't really know is can you overdose the body on total joules, or is it in, when it's only when it's concentrated? That's what we don't know. Um, my gut feeling is that, you know, people are not going to, stay under these things forever like so 10 minutes or half an hour there's mm -hmm. no harm at all okay you know maybe if you went to sleep all night <laughs> you would overdose yourself it wouldn't surprise me but mostly I, I tell people they can use these things for 10 or 20 minutes a day and it'll have major benefits and they're extremely likely to have any ill effects and let me also just comment that the security lamp uh, bowl, or devices that you recommended, uh, thank you for that, uh, they're, it, because they're at 850 nanometers, they, that's, that's not a lot of heat. Whereas a heat lamp would be actually, if you had the equivalent 100 watt heat lamp, I mean, you could burn yourself, but the, yeah. you're not going to burn yourself with this. No, it's, it's, but virtually no heat at all. Like, no. You can feel a little warmth, but it's like no heat. No. Yeah. So that's a that's a great strategy, and actually, it just occurred to me that because uh, I was, this may be more effective to uh, set because a number of people have infrared saunas um, that's been the, a popular choice for, and I think, and I'm a strong advocate of those. I think there's many benefits as long as they are very low EMF because you can have very dangerous EMS from some of these ceramic panels. And, uh, but I think if you have one of those low EMF far infrared, it would seem that you could put some of these security lamp devices in there and you essentially you would have a, com it really, it, it really isn't full spectrum, but it's, 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 I guess, biologically full spectrum because you're getting the near yeah. infrared and then you get then certainly all the far infrared. I've heard that people are getting saunas that have both near infrared and far infrared. Try and get but, the but, best of both. Worlds. But I think that, that that's being done with heat lamps, you know, which is good because you want to get it hot anyway. But 80, 90 percent of that heat lamp is 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 still far infrared. It's not the near. Yeah, no, absolutely. But so, you know, it, it seems it would be a lot more effective dose if you use these security camera. Uh, yeah. Secure, what, what, they're security camera lights? That's what they're called. Yeah, floodlights. I guess flood it's, lights. I think they call them like near infrared floodlights. Okay. So that's a, that's a great strategy. And so to the best of your knowledge, no one's really doing experiments with these. No, I don't think so. No, I don't know. but but the science suggests it would work. The science has been done. Yeah, and also, you know, several folks have got them because I recommended them, and the feedback I get is they work just great. 
Wow. Like said, that, that, work, work rate for what? Oh, you know, a lot of people have problems with the brain, but other people have like orthopedic problems, musculoskeletal problems, um, you know, where typically near infrared photobiomodulation works great. The question just is, what's the best way to, to deliver it to the body? Yes, indeed. Um, you know, I think that for a lot of applications that are, are going to be great, nobody's really studied them much. And I'll give you one example, which is kidney failure, right? Mm -hmm. So kidney failure is the third leading cause of death. And these are old folks who are dying from kidney failure. You can't really give them transplants because they're elderly. And, you know, you put a near-infrared LED array around the, the, where their kidneys are, and this seems to work like a dream, but hardly been <laughs> studied at all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Before I went to medical school, I actually harvested kidneys for transplants for patients. Okay. And, you know, so I have some experience in that, that area. But, you know, even in an ideal circumstance, you have to be – it's not your own tissue. So you have to be placed on these very dangerous and necessary immunosuppressive drugs, which will literally destroy – to seek to destroy your immune system or certainly suppress it and, and have their own complications. So, boy, <laughs> and the cost with that. I mean, it's, it's most of those, almost everyone is, it's, I believe there's a, it's an aspect of Medicare or Medicaid program. I, mean, I think it's Medicare, it's end stage renal disease program where it's covered by the government. So, uh, you know, they don't have to worry about paying for it, but geez, I mean, it is expensive and, you know, we're spending $3 trillion a year every year. So it would be a far less expensive and safer long-term option to use some infrared therapy. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Any any other exciting applications that you've seen it used for? Dude, well, I wasn't I aware think, of the kidney one. Yeah. Well, you know, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and again, you know, where do you put the light? I think most oh, yeah. people end up putting it on the belly, right? Because... You know, light has effects on fats and you know, it can melt it away a little bit, but it, it's anti-inflammatory. And, and a lot of these problems are caused by having excess inflammation in your sort of belly fat. Right? It's just mm. like a big sort of reservoir of all these inflammatory cytokines. And so I think so does the near, could you explain the impact of near-infrared on the inflammatory process? And well, the it's highly anti-inflammatory. It, it seems to change the macrophage phenotype from M1, which is pro-inflammatory and, you know, interleukin-1, TNF-alpha, IL-6, to M2 phenotype, which is IL-4, IL-10, TGF-beta. And the interesting thing is that M2 macrophages are really good at phagocytosis, right? So they gobble up the garbage. So in your brain, when you've got amyloid plaques or tau tangles or alpha synuclein sort of aggregates, reducing the inflammation is key, but also encouraging the microglia to be good garbage removal agents, in, in my opinion, is hugely important. But nevertheless, for many systemic inflammatory disorders such as type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome and all these things changing the inflammatory profile from pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory has a huge big deal so do you think there sounds like there'd be some benefit uh, to expose yourself on a regular basis to this I've seen some devices that are almost the size of a conventional door that are, have about 300 watts of LEDs okay. that you can, you can essentially expose your whole body to it. And w in, in, in an array like that, what would be your estimate for an optimal dosing strategy, like 10 minutes on each side of your body? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's simple to do. You could, you could actually, and is there at, at, at 600 and 850, is there any danger to looking at that light when you're standing in front of the bed from your perspective? It's probably okay. healthy and beneficial, I would think. So red light can dazzle you, and especially, you know, 630. If you look at a 630 nanometer array, you get dazzled. But it's not harmful for the eyes. You know, it takes you a while to recover. Near infrared is actually very good for your eyes. Um, 
you know, things like 8.30 or 8.50. You know, as I get older, I know, think my eyesight's not as good as it was. <laughs> I quite often stick some 850 nanometer light in my eyes. Um,